I would tell him that guilt is feeling bad about what you've done, whereas shame is feeling bad about who you are. And both of these are ugly attitudes that can and should be overcome through self-respect and more honesty. Because if he can extract himself from the, the content of his guilty or shameful stories up into the context of the situation in which they occurred, and then up again to consider that situation from other points of view, factoring in um, other people's um, circumstances and other people's points of view, it quickly becomes quite clear that these painful stories originate from a very egoistic and self-centered victim perspective. It's like, it's all about me, 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 me. I can't believe that I did that thing, or it must have been my fault, or I should have helped them, I should have known better, or they're expecting me to be as good as them, or, or what would they think if, it, if I do that thing? I would explain to him that this narcissistic self-indulgent behavior is not only unattractive, but painful too, and it should be stopped as soon as possible. I tried to point out that the I he is referring to in guilty thoughts such as I let them down, that I is not a real person. It's merely an expectation, a responsibility, a concept, a virtual reality story embellished with hindsight and then thrust upon himself when in fact he was just simply doing what he did and on a different day he might have done something different. I would tell him that there is nothing that he ought to have done or he should have known or was expected to do as these rules or expectations are only valid for those who wish to play by tribal, cultural or religious agreements. And I'd remind him that because happiness was his goal, rather than being nice or right, he would have to learn to let go of guilt and respectfully apply guilt fibs when necess necessary. I would explain to him that in its simplest form, a guilt agreement is only possible between two consenting players. The first who chooses to apply the guilt and the second who chooses to receive that guilt or that judgment. Because if the first person says, well, I haven't seen you for so long, you were, your work must be more important than I am. And if the other person says, yes, it is, and then just smiles, the guilt agreement can't begin because the second person had enough honesty and self-esteem to say what it meant calmly and without taking anything personally. So I would explain to young John that guilt comes from having low self-esteem and we might define self-esteem as the degree to with which you won't let others be horrible to you and the skill of learning how to be honest and nice to yourself. I'd add that if his own brain were trying to guilt him, surely that is just self-abuse as there's nobody else trying to do it to him, so that wouldn't be at all sensible. More likely, the judgment aspect of his brain is prodding the victim aspect of his brain um, and allowing his hurt ego to feed parasitically from all that emotional drama. I would explain to him that where possible, it's best to avoid those who try to guilt him and when he can't um, remove himself from them, that he should reply with respect to, with respectful guilt fibs to not accept that guilt. Um, let me give you an example. If a person says, I can't believe you would have done such a thing, I would suggest that his range of responses may range from, it's none of your business, uh, right through to, oh, that was such a long time ago, I've changed so much, I don't do that anymore. Or perhaps he could just listen to what they said so they feel heard and then they'll stop badgering him. However, inwardly, he'd completely dismiss the comment as it just wasn't his problem, NMP. Um, let me give an example. If someone tried to guilt him by saying, I thought you were a much kinder person, he might simply say, thank you for bringing that to my attention. They feel heard, so they be quiet. There's no defensive argument. And by swallowing his pride, um, he hasn't made the issue personally. Of course, you know, some frustration or anger or some other emotion may still be triggered, but they can just be released in the background and they no longer initiate defensive or 
attack and responses as the emotion has been separated from the stories. And I would explain to him that people can only guilt you if you let them. And there is never any excuse to guilt yourself. I tell him to acknowledge past mistakes and to move on. Okay. And I would go on to remind him that his brain has two hemispheres. Uh, the left being more animal and egoistic with strong desires to, to get things and to receive attention. And he shouldn't let those animal instincts dominate him. Yeah? Sure, they're there, uh, and he could accept that they're part of him, uh, but they can be subdued to the best of his abilities. Yeah? And his right brain, more spiritual hemisphere, only makes errors out of ignorance, not self-indulgence. Oh, self -indulgence. Therefore, it's important to separate his animal instincts from his spiritual self. And this is why the horse and rider metaphor works so well. His soul as the rider can influence his body, the horse, though he will never be able to fully control it. Uh, so when the animal side plays up, he can simply smile and accept it and still do whatever else he chooses to do. Next up, I would advise him where possible to always tell the truth to himself and others, okay? And where that's not possible, to either remain silent or to fib with integrity. I tell him to never lie to somebody who trusts him and never trust anybody who lies to him. And I suggest that saying no to another person, if that's how he feels, is saying yes to himself, okay? He should stop trying to be a people pleaser and he should be more honest about what he wants and he should never be afraid to ask directly anybody for what he needs. He should recognize that his words have power and that he should use his words wisely. The output from his mouth and his observed behaviors will be the input into another person's brain, thus forming their virtual reality story that their brain will record and this story will later be used to unconsciously decide how to remember and how to treat him. So I would say, don't assume that people know you. If the person is important to you, okay, you might consider what virtual reality story you might want to train in to that other person's brain or do you need to update an old virtual reality story that that person has of you in their brain? And I would suggest that he consider the concept that the word truth can mean anything to anybody. Therefore, to consider what is true for him and to decide whether he can live his life in truth according to his own definition of the word truth. I would suggest that integrity, honesty, Creativity, creativity uh, love and trust might be some truths that it's worth him fighting for. Okay, so if we switch topics to um, anxiety, OCD and depression, I would tell him 